I suppose looking back, I came from an anti-war family. It was my grandfather's influence. He'd been in the First World War. And as kids, we were keen to ask him about his experiences in the First World War. And he said one day to us, he burst out and said, it was bloody slaughter and shut up, you kids. That's, that's it. That's the last of it. You're not going to hear any more. And we were told, you know, by our parents, just don't bother Grandpa about it. So it obviously had affected him. My father went to the Second World War. He was up in uh, Papua New Guinea. And he wouldn't tell us anything about the war till he was in his 80s. And then he told me about his experiences. And we used to have just comments in the house that were to be like, war's, war's stupid, it's just a waste of time and, you know, I hate warmongers. And so I had an influence like that. But when I became aware of the government introducing conscription, which I f felt was absolutely irreprehensible, it was really the um, compulsory acquisition of somebody's life. It was just forcing people into, into the army. So that's how I started to evolve a, a thinking about it. A lot of people in my generation were just so angry about the bastardry of it all. According to my ASIO file, in August 1965, I went along to a youth campaign against conscription meeting at the Unitarian Memorial, Peace Memorial Church in Grey Street, East Melbourne. And that was the formation of the youth campaign against conscription. There were a lot of young people from churches um, and from the YLA who formed that membership. But what staggered me then when I read the ASIO file was that somebody was there from ASIO <laughs> watching us uh, undertaking what was quite clearly, as in my view, a democratic thing that we should be able to do. We should be able to challenge government policy. Otherwise, why do we bloody go to wars for, to fight for a freedom? I got absorbed in all this with a, what I can only say is an, uh, an idealism. That's what motivated me because uh, like many of our generation, at a certain point you got to thinking not about the issues that government was putting forward, uh, but what sort of society were we going to be if we felt we could kill people in another country, bomb them, napalm them, you know, imprison them, shoot them as, as you know, as Viet Cong, uh, it became a moral issue. The Americans, for some reason, allowed it to be televised. And that turned a lot of people against the war because they just saw night after night this horror. And it was, it was such a contrast of what, what values you felt you had in the society. It's something I learned from the anti-Vietnam years. You realise that when a government makes a statement like the Menzies government did about sending Australian troops into Vietnam, that it can be three or five people will make that statement within a government and that'll get passed off as the truth and opinion makers in newspaper editors and television reporters will repeat that truth you know, in inverted commas, and uh, it'll do enormous damage. People lost their lives. People have been ruined for 30 and 40 years by having gone to Vietnam as soldiers and come back, you know, and they're alcoholics or suicide or their family life's been wrecked. And it goes back to the way three or four people at the top of the government can make a decision and put it into effect and... Um, it is complete bullshit.